Uh, hello, this is a follow-up video on an earlier one that discussed how to get a copy of a discontinued last edition uh, traditional paper chart. And we showed how to get them from in another video from uh, historical charts at NOAA. And now I want to show how once you get a chart like that, you could actually geo-reference it so that it would load into a navigation program so that if you wanted to, you could make a more direct comparison with the modern ENC charts and... Um, and, and, and see how they've changed or what, there's often, for example, to see where the contours are, what the land looks like that we're missing on the ENC, there's various reasons to maybe look at that. Um, the charts will be outdated. Essentially, all U.S. E, uh, traditional paper charts are already, all are already outdated. None have been updated for months. And, uh, okay, so here, now, so the first point to make, please, is when you download that chart from the historical charts, they will be large files. Let's just see how big this one is. You see, this is the one that came right straight from the NOAA charts, 19 megabytes, 5, 000, uh, 12,000 pixels across. This one over here... Uh, now, what I've done over here, though, on this one, is I've just reduced it by, I don't know, 50% or something. And every Mac and a modern PC uh, a Windows version has a very simple way to open the image and reduce the size. And it's a little better. There's no point in, in dragging around all this size for, uh, for what we're going to do. And for example, if I go here and then just zoom in, this is now the small one. Um, the small one you see here I'll zoom into that and then the uh, same thing over here on the on the one that's fi uh, twice as big um, let me just see where that the same bay is Andrews Bay uh, and I'll just zoom this one one more something like that so you see it's maybe a hair sharper but it's not going to be any difference at all for our actual navigation so we can use the um, we can use the the smaller one, and that's the one we're going to use now. Um, so let me close this, close this, and then um, the first thing we're going to want to do is get a couple reference points. There, you could do this geo referencing without these reference points, but it does make it easier. If I, uh, let me just zoom in here again and go up here uh, to the top left corner. And then I'm going to just take this as a reference point here. And I just wrote them down here. I'm going to take this the top left corner and it's 48. Uh, this is 123 degrees, 18 minutes. And this is uh, 48 degrees, 38 minutes. That's a reference point. Well, we're going to do this. There's various ways to do the uh, geo-referencing, but I've tried to figure out what's the easiest way. And I think for the most part, the fastest, easiest way in the long run is just to use Google Earth. And so down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have this other point that is uh, 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 4826 and 123.04. So those are our two reference points that we're going to use. And now we we'll open Google Earth and go in. And the idea here is we're just going to plot those. We're going to plot those points on the chart. Oh, this already has a... Oh, let me get rid of this. I've already done this. Uh, let me... Um, let me get rid of this. I want to do it again. Well, there's a, those are the two points, and I've already plotted them in there. But I'll just show you how you plot a point. You do, you go up here, and you uh, just uh, hit this thing here, and that'll put a point, this point on the chart. And this is, as long as this screen over here is showing, then this is movable here. And then you can put the name. And what I did here, where is that name? Here, I just took this thing like this. Command C, click, I put that in for the name. 
and then I typed in that latitude and longitude right here and say save. The other thing too that I was done is I went to here you can change the icon and I just changed it to a little small icon that's a little more precise. Or for, it's hard to tell on those others where the point really is. And so that's, that's what was done there, cancel. And so I've put in those two points. Uh, there in the Google Earth. The other thing to keep in mind, look, see this ends all tilted over to the right? That means it's not north oriented. Now you can either click this in, you can click this in to straighten it up, or you can press the N key on your keyboard. Your N key on your keyboard or push that, and then you got north on this. Now that's where our chart's going to go. Now, so then we add uh, image overlay, and then you go and browse and get it. And let's see, ours that we're using is the small one right here, seven megabytes. Uh, okay, open. And that is uh, that. Now I'm going to change the transparency here a little bit. And then you, okay, so there's the start of the, there's the start of the process. And you can see this corner is supposed to be up there somewhere. So let's just go in here and uh, grab that chart. And let me bring this in. Where we want, we want that, we want this point to be here. So let's just take the, whoop, sorry. I'm gonna take the mountain to Muhammad here and bring this down to here uh, and put it right there for the, Okay, that's the first shot. Let's see how close we are. Not very close. Um, let me get it a little closer. Well, sometimes there's an iterative process. When I move this one, then I'm going to have to go down. Okay, now I'm going to go down and check the bottom guy down here. And he is, see this is supposed to be here. I'm going to just grab this and bring this point up to here. Let's see if I can, how close I am. Can do a little bit better. Something like that, okay. Now, it probably doesn't hurt to, after doing that to bounce back here and see if things have moved, and for sure they have. So I'm gonna grab this guy and bring him back down to where he goes right here. Uh, that's not bad. Okay, something like that. It's, you know, we, we, we would like to have this as, as close as we can. And then down here, this guy's still off just a little bit. Okay. All right. So there, that's, that's then... Uh, uh, okay, that's pretty good. Now we're done. And we're going to, oh, we have to give this a name. And this says 18433. And I'll just put from Google Earth. And then uh, that's everything. OK, save. I mean, not save, quit. All right, then, then what we do here is um, we've got, this is the one we just made. So you right click it and say save place as and I'm gonna put it here where we've been working now it defaults to KMZ and that's just fine but it's a little better to change that let me bring this up so you can see it it defaults to KMZ but I think the KMZs don't always work that well in a mobile device, phone or tablet, whereas the KMLs always work, seem to be better. So it, again, I would just switch it to KML. It's such, if you have a very complex, complex file that you're making, then you might have to use a compressed KMZ, but this works fine this way. Okay, there we go, that's it, oh, got it. Now, that's done. We have now, that file we can now load, we're in a sense done with Google Earth, and we can go back. Uh, we're sort of done with all that. We can open up QTVLM, and then we load it here So uh, as a chart. So let's say you go to Gribs, Weather Images, open a weather image, and now let's go to, let's see, that's one, that's two. Let me go to number number three. And I'm going to browse, and this is, uh, let's get it. 
uh, here it was. Here's the one we made right here. See, it's only 566 bytes. But here's a, here's a key thing. Let me mention this now. Uh, this is the file we used. So wherever you store this, you have to store this at the same place. For example, if you look at this, if you say, um, let me just say open with, uh, is there a, well, I'm in the middle of loading it, so I can't do that right now. I'll come back to that in a minute. But it, it, this, this file assumes that this image is sitting right beside it. Okay, so we've opened that one, uh, and this is going to be 18443. And now, um, um, okay, let's do that, 18443. Uh, I'll just put it again from Google Earth as a reminder. Okay, and so that should do it because that should have brought the georeferencing information with it. So we have to active, turn it on, uh, lock it, assuming everything's going to work right. It's always a surprise if it does. Okay, it does. Well, I don't mean it's always a surprise. If you do it right, it always works. Um, Okay, so there's that. Now you can change the, I don't know what the transparency was. Let me go back. For the, for the ones normally you would want to, um, um, load in, uh, let's see, where am I? What am I after here? Oh, I want to go in and change the transparency. So Gribs, weather files, open a weather file. Yeah, this could be like that, no transparency at all, and it's solid white. And then, so then you have uh, this chart in here that you could navigate on, or you could then compare it to the ENC of that region. And if I check here, let, let me, well, let me, where did we, let's go to our reference point right here. Let's see how close we got it. That is, uh, you see, 4826. 12304. So, okay, so that thing georeferenced properly. And now, so you've got that. You can, you can, uh, you can say, as long as you save in a folder, wherever you put it, it doesn't matter where it is, but on your computer, if you save that KML file right next to that, uh, the image we're loading, then you can always load it back in here and you don't have to georeference it. So that's the way that works. That's the process. Okay, so, th so that's the way it works, and you'll have that uh, to look at, if you like, as a, as a basically uh, RNC.